Hey everybody, this is a tutorial video for how to build the interlaced polyhedra V5. Now the first thing you're going to need is all of the subunits that you use to make the stellated icosidodecahedron. And that will include an icosidodecahedron and 20 three-sided points, 19 of which are this size and one of which is just one step smaller. And that also includes 12 of these five-sided points. So I'm going to go ahead and post a link to that tutorial so you can see how to make all of that. And I'm going to set these aside and you'll see why I'm in it. You're also going to need 12 of these subunits here. Now the way that you make those is you start off with 10 stacked rings of 18. And you take them and you cut them up into five long straight pieces. And then you can attach them together at the corners, just like that. And then take a single pentagon of five magnets and put it down right here in the middle. Just like that. And that's how you make these. You need 12 of them. So, now that you have all the subunits from the stellated icosidodecahedron and also the 12 of these, to start assembling this thing, what you want to do is you want to take these and you're going to set them down on top of the pentagonal faces here. So this one will go down just like that. And it's not really attaching to anything, you'll notice. It's just kind of resting. Uh, there's a little bit of an attractive force, but it's not a whole lot. And so you want to make sure it's nice and symmetric, that everything is even all the way across. And then you can take another one and attach it to another pentagonal face and it'll attach at the edges to this other um, kind of five-pointed star subunit thing. So you can start to do that. And you want to go all the way around the shape. Now the issue is, is that it's really fragile and it's almost impossible to do this on a hard flat surface. So my solution to this is to bring in a nice red throw pillow, which is why I have all the subunits off of this table for now. So you can put the first three or four of these on and have it work on a hard surface. You can maybe even get like the first six of them on, but then when you flip it over, you're going to need to put it on a pillow like this. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay, so sorry that was kind of out of frame. I just couldn't bring it in. Um, but you end up with this shape. And I'm going to go ahead and leave it on this for now because it's still very fragile. Because um, basically the only thing holding the outer polyhedron that you just built onto the inner icosidodecahedron is just the fact that they're practically the same size. There's not a whole lot of magnetic attraction going on there. So now what you need to do is pick one of the three-sided faces, and it can be any of them, on the inner icosidodecahedron. And you want to take the one three-sided point that is smaller than the rest of them. And you want to attach it down by first removing the three magnets on the points, just like that. And you want to do that to all three legs. And then you can attach it down so that the end attaches on to the magnet at the very corner of each of these triangles. Just like that. And now you want to take three of these 
five-sided points here and you want to attach them down on to the uh, the uh, kind of the five-sided faces these ones here and you do that by again removing all the magnets from the legs and then having it attached down so that each leg clicks in to one of these corners. You want to do this carefully because it does have a tendency to stick in places that it's not supposed to. That's basically correct. You may need to do a little bit of adjusting. And if you watch the stellated icosidodecahedron tutorial, you will remember that um, you have to adjust each of these legs so that both layers of magnets, the one that you can see and then the one underneath it, are both attaching to the base icosidodecahedron. And you want to go ahead and do this on the five-sided points that surround this, so all three of these. Okay, so once you're at this point, you want to take three more of these three-sided points and you want to attach them on the three three-sided faces that are in between these three five-sided points. So that one and that one and that one. So go ahead and do that. Okay, and now you have that part complete. And now very carefully, you want to go ahead and flip it down off of this pillow so that it's sitting on the table on this surface here. Okay, and now it's flipped over and I had to repair a couple of minor things that, um, oh look, there's another one, that a couple of edges that got bent when it was sitting on the pillow. So you want to go over and make sure and check that everything is straight, nothing's bent up, because if you have anything that's bent up, this whole thing will collapse. It won't stand. Everything needs to be right. Um, so now that you're at this point, you can go ahead and start adding on the rest of the points. And I'm going to go ahead and bring them up on the table now. And you want to go ahead and start attaching them on. And there's not really a specific order anymore where you have to attach them on a certain way. But it's best to work from the bottom and go up. So go ahead and do that.
And there you go. That is how you build the interlaced polyhedra V5. And you'll probably notice that this is not exactly the same as the interlaced polyhedra V5 that I originally did for the video that I did of it. Um, this one is altered to use the icosidodecahedron that I figured out rather than one that uh, I had used before that was someone else's shape. And um, this one is a little bit easier to build. I think it's slightly more sturdy, although that's kind of debatable. This will still um, collapse if you so much as bump the table. Um, and it also uses a few more magnets. Ah, there you go. See, it collapsed. All I did was spin it a little bit. This thing is fragile. Like, really, really, really headache-inducingly fragile. But that's how you build it. At least it stayed together long enough for me to show you how to do it. And I guess I'll smash it, what's left of it.